Hello friends. In this video, we will explore Sasta, one of the long read genome assembly tool. So these are the topics that we are going to cover. First, uh, we will just see the you know about introduction about Sasta tool. Followed by we will see how the installation can be done, and then uh, we will go through the assembly process using this Sasta tool, and then we will be uh, doing the hands off. So there are many you know uh, long read genome assembly tools are available uh, like Sasta, Fly, Miniasm, you know WT, WTDB, G2, Kanu. So we will be exploring Sasta, and in this video, you know this series of video at the end we will be uh, covering Fly and these tools, and at the end we will be comparing them like how the genome assembly will uh, change, you know. So how the tools uh, uh, vary and how they uh, the assembly statistics are different based on the tool we use. Now, uh, Sasta is the tool that is mainly designed for you know assembling Oxpro Nanopore technology data ONT data assembly. So this is the original uh, paper of the Sasta tool, which talks about like Nanopore sequencing and the Sasta toolkit enable efficient de novo assembly of 11 human genome. And the Sasta toolkit consists of uh, Sasta, a de novo long read assembler, followed by policing uh, the you know assembly using margin polis and helen so sasta followed by margin polis and helen these three together forms the sasta toolkit and the the paper claims that you know sasta produced a complete haploid human genome assembly in under 6 hours on a single commercial compute node so we can see that this uh, tool is you know comparatively uh, ultra fast you know compared to other tools so there is uh, if you want to know more about uh, this paper and so there is a nice uh, video over here so you, we can go to this nanoportech.com resource center and under that uh, you can go to this link uh, which will you know navigate you to the you know, detail of this uh, paper coming to the installation uh, the this is the page, this this links is the installation link so it's very simple like uh, because uh, the tool is available in binary format so we can directly down download it using curl command and once uh, it's downloads we can simply you know make it executable so that it will be available for uh, you know directly we can use it so there is no need of installation we can directly download the binary file Coming to the assembly steps, also these are the standard uh, steps that uh, any, you know, uh, the assembly pipelines, uh, you know, uh, we need to follow. First, let's say uh, the first step is like we do the sequencing, okay, and since it is Oxford Nanopore specific, we use that uh, Oxford Nanopore to get the sequence, and then we need to convert or uh, pre-process the raw data to get obtain the first queue file. Maybe we can use Guppy, uh, the uh, tool to convert the raw data to first queue format, and before proceeding further, you know, we need to check the quality using QC tools and then we do some cleaning filtering like that and then we will have the clean data. So uh, once we have the clean reads then we need to uh, again we have to first before using Sasta for assembly we have to first convert you know the fast queue to faster format because Sasta requires faster as input not fast queue. Okay, Sasta uh, in the tool also provides uh, the script fastq to fasta.py, which we can we will be using to convert this fastq to fasta format. Then uh, we will use the Sasta tool for the assembly, and once assembly is done, you know we can check the assembly statistics using Quast as the third party tool. Okay, so the first step is like how to first step is convert the fast queue to faster using this script and which is provided by Sasta itself. The script is very simple. You pass the script name, then pass the fast queue file, and you give the faster file name. So here uh, we will be using a demo data demo ont dot fast queue file, and we will convert that into faster format. So now once we have the faster file, we will be using that in the next step. So let's first you know convert this. Okay. So I'm just copying the command. So in my system, uh, in this folder, I have this, you know, fastq file. Okay. So we can quickly check uh, the head to see that uh, there are fastq files. It's a huge fastq files. Quality is there. Okay. And uh, yeah. So let's just copy it. So now uh, in my system, the fastq dot this, you know, this is present in this location. So I just um, I'm just copying this path. So let's uh, copy this path and then a demo ont dot fast queue this is the input file and this is the output file dot faster okay so now you see we have the faster file available so we can uh, check how many you know uh, sequences are there 
within this or how many reads are there within this so uh, you type wc minus l so there are 4725 you know uh, input reads are there which we are going to assemble it so now we have the uh, you know fasta file available so now next what we will be using now sasta so now this command what you see is a simple command so like sasta then we have to give uh, input the fasta file then we have to give an output directory like assembly directory like so we are we are seeing that let's dump the all the output in this folder sasta underscore assembly folder then here we are giving an uh, minimum read length parameter 100 so that means any reads which are less than 100 will be discarded okay so that means they are not going to be used in the assembly process so by default this parameter is 10000 uh, you know basis so if you do not give this parameter so what will happen if by any chance in in your data if there are uh, less num means any reads which are having less than 10000 basis those will be discarded so depending on the data set you have and depending on the read length that we have we need to specify what would be the minimum read length cutoff so this uh, parameter is an, is an important parameter so once this command finishes it will dump the all the you know assembly results in this sasta assembly folder so here is the snapshot of the output folder and here you can see that there is a uh, assembly sequence is assembly dot fasta so this is our assembly fasta i mean assembled sequence contexts are available in this file so let's run this command okay just copy this uh, here and i will be pasting it here and let's bring it to one line okay so now instead of sasta i have to give the path of the sasta location so just i'm this is uh, lo installed in this location so so now just copy this and go to the terminal okay so here this is my sasta and my input is demo ont dot fasta and i'm giving the assembly directory is sasta assembly okay and the minimum read length cutoff i'm giving 100 okay so it will take some time to run it and once it runs it will uh, give all the files it will generate all these files over here so, okay so uh, it will take some time and it will now uh, overlaps the reads and then it is generating the context so now you see we have the uh, folder created so let's uh, go to this uh, folder otherwise i can show over here okay sasta demo folder and we have this output file sasta assembly so now you see that we have this assembly dot fasta and there are some other informations are also available and also you can see there is you know assembly summary dot html file will be there okay so which is the summary that is given by sasta itself okay so let me zoom it so now uh, you can see that there are two sections so this is about reads that are used in the assembly process and here the reads that are discarded uh, which is not uh, based on that read length cutoff since we have i have given you know read length cutoff just 100 so none of them got discarded so let's say if i do not uh, specify this parameter then and if i specify 10000 as the read length cutoff then probably some of the reads will be discarded so this section talks about how many reads are discarded like that and the reason why they are you know discarded like because of invalid bases or because they were too short so the, or maybe they have the repeat counts greater than 255 because these are the reason why you know uh, this will uh, co increase the complexity of the assembly uh, process so either the read contains some invalid bases or either they were short or you know repeat count greater than 255 okay so this now these are the reads that are used in the assembly so what is the minimum read length uh, in this example i had you know 100 so you know minimum read length was 100 and how many number of reads were used so here 4725 that means all the reads in our files was used for the assembly process and the total basis were around this much and uh, the average read length you know there are 4725 reads were there so average read le uh, read length was found to be around you know 13266 and uh, the read n50 value uh, this is the you know n50 statistics so you can uh, so this is used for comparing the assembly process so n50 value was found to be 27711 and then some other parameters are there and how many reads are you know flagged as palindromic how many reads are flagged as chimeric so those kind of you know interesting informations will be also available and then if you go down uh, at the last uh, you will see the you know contig information that is assembled segments or contig so basically sasta call it segments which is also known as the contigs so total number of segments or contigs that were assembled by sasta is around 49 okay and when we add the total all the contig length that means total assembled 
contig or segment length is like 80 you know 8 lakhs this much and the longest assemble uh, a longest contig okay was you know the length of the longest contig is this thing and now the n50 value is uh, I mean the of the contig is around you uh, know this much okay so this way this is an interesting you know uh, information uh, that we uh, the sasta itself provides but however we can uh, use uh, some other uh, you know tool like as i seeing like we will be using quast for uh, assembling uh, getting the statistics okay so that is the third command uh, like so now our assembly is finished so we got this assembly of dot fasta file so we'll be using quast and you just specify the output directory where you uh, where you dump the out, uh, the quast will dump the output and you give the input just the fasta file so let's run this command okay so just copy this and Okay, so I'm, we are in the terminal so we have to go back this folder okay now type this command okay so now quash.py is the, uh, the path in my system it is installed in this location okay so just copy this uh, quast path okay instead of uh, in the place of quast then we specify the output directory as the sasta assembly quast and we give the input file as you know assembly.fasta okay so now this will now take this assembly file and it will uh, generate you know uh, all the assembly statistics okay so it's showing that this file is uh, not found so let's see okay okay so okay i have to go to this folder so now uh, and I, I i went back to one more folder right previous so that's the reason so i have to be uh, no 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 sorry so there are many folder there so i'm going to you know sasta demo folder so this was my uh, working directory so now I, if i run over here same command so uh, this is the quast the output directory and here within that i have sasta assembly folder and within that assembly.fasta is there so now it will run it so it got now it got the correct uh, path okay so when you are working on so you have to be present uh, you know since this this is the relative path is used, used so you have to uh, be the, in the correct location okay so now quest is finished so let's go back over here so we have now the quest result so uh, here uh, the, you can open the report.html file okay so uh, you can open in let's say any any browser over here okay so sorry uh, it will it, it's got hanged okay it's open so let me zoom it so now uh, first you will see uh, <clears throat> you know different uh, statistics uh, uh, of quest since here we are not using any you know reference sequences so these statistics are purely based on the uh, assembled context okay so here you see by default uh, the total contigs are 49 okay but if we apply uh, you know 500 base pair cutoff that means only consider contigs that are greater than 500 base pair then we will get 45 number of contigs so other contigs like if you apply a thousand base pair cutoff that means there are 39 contigs are there which are greater than thousand base pair you know long similar there are 20 contigs which are greater than 5000 base pair long so that means this statistics shows like as the uh, we apply different you know base uh, base pair cutoff how the number of contigs vary and the largest contig was this much okay and the total length or the total assembly size that means if we keep on adding the you know contig length the assembly size the total is around this much <coughs> and how the total length varies if we uh, apply different you know uh, base pair threshold and the n50 value is this thing so that means this value uh, is that contig length that means this and beyond uh, and above all the contigs if we add so we will reach to the 50 percent of the uh, assembly uh, size okay similarly n75 value is around 23904 and l50 l75 values are there and this assembly has you know 46.59 percent gc content okay so along with the statistics uh, you know uh, quest also gives you a very nice visualization the first plot is like cumulative length plot so where the x axis consists of your uh, contigs so in our case there were 40 and 5 contigs are there so 0 to 45 contig and the y axis like the assembly length so if we keep on adding you know each uh, contig so the assembly size increases and finally when we everything is you know added so finally we'll get the total assembly size okay
Then the second plot is the NX plot. So here the X axis consists of the N level like N0, N10, N20, N30 like that. So the N50 value is what? So you can see that N50 value is 1, 2, 3, 1, 68. Okay. So this gives the N, N value. So N75 means you have to go over here and you have to just see like what is the N50, uh, N75 value. The third plot is the GC content. So you can see that uh, it looks clearly, you know, mostly normal distribution kind of pattern we see. And you can also check, uh, you know, the uh, assembly wise. So that means there are four bins, uh, one contig which is having, you know, assembly, uh, the GC content between 35 to 40. There are 10 uh, contigs between 40 to 45 percent GC content. Majority of them, 33 are between 45 to 50. And only one which is having slightly higher 50 to 55 percent of GC content. So, in addition to all these, you know, uh, uh, parameters, so most important parameter is just for N50 value. So, this gives like how the contiguity is there of this, uh, you know, assembly. Okay. So, now uh, we have uh, seen uh, the quast is finished. Okay. So, now this way, uh, basically, uh, now we have just got the assembly, but the next step usually, you know, after the assembly, we need to polish the assembly uh, using uh, some tools such as margin polish and Helen. This is generally, this comes falls under the Sasta toolkit. That means if you use Sasta, you should be using, you know, uh, compatible tools like margin polish and Helen. Currently, it has been, you know, replaced with paper. So that means Sasta should be followed by paper. Okay. So, in summary, what we have seen, like uh, we first uh, took the uh, data set and we used FastQ to FASTA. Okay. Um, uh, then we use the FASTA file to uh, use SASTA for the assembly. Okay. Then once we got this you know, assembly.FASTA file, we used Quast to check the you know assembly statistics. So, this is just you know uh, one uh, assembly. So, but in, in, in real uh, you know, example case, what you should be doing, you should be using multiple tools like Qua, uh, like Sasta, you know, uh, uh, Fly and other tools. And then you can compare like how each tools is behaving uh, and based on, you know, um, whatever based on computational time, you know, the assembly parameters and other that we can uh, check the assembly, you know, uh, which, which tool is the best working and then we can decide. So, uh, thanks for uh, watching this video. I hope uh, this video was useful. If you like, uh, if you, you know, um, enjoyed this and it was helpful, so please like it. And yes, if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon, so which will give you the notification. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you.